Today I just want to talk about some of the assumptions or maybe even misconceptions that exist about being a so-called Linux power user. Now I say so-called because apparently I'm one of these people but I don't really think about using Linux like that. I just use it as an operating system and I, I don't know, I, I use my computer a lot so I guess, I guess you'd call me a power user but I don't really think about it like that. But that's not really the point of today's video. So the point I'm trying to get at is I think this mindset partially exists because of some of the people who are popular Linux creators on YouTube. Now, not all of the people who are Linux creators really fit into this mold. So people like Chris Titus, Lunduke, and the Linux Gamer, they don't really fit into the mold that I'm really referring to, but you wouldn't argue that they aren't Linux power users. The idea that I'm referring to is that being a Linux power user means that you must use lots of terminal applications, you must really care about open source software, you must use Vim or Emacs, and you must use a tiling window manager. That's the sort of idea that I'm referring to, and I think that this partially exists because of people like DT and Luke. So if you're modeling what a Linux power user is based off of people like that, I can see how you'd get that idea. And today I just want to talk about how I and a lot of other people like me may not fit into that mold as well as some people may seem to think we do. So first up, I just want to talk a bit about terminal applications. So if you watch my content, you'll see that I cover a lot of terminal applications. I use terminal applications frequently. This isn't just a thing for my channel. I actually do use terminal applications a lot of the time. And the reason why I cover them on the channel all the time is because generally they perform really well because my audience seems to like the terminal applications and I like to play with them as well. So it's kind of just a win-win. I get to play with fun stuff. You get to see questionably good videos and everyone wins. But then I'll cover tools like, say, Chaffer. And that's a tool that's basically used to do an image render in my terminal. And even though this is a really cool tool and it's really cool that you can render an image in your terminal, I don't handicap myself like this. So even though I might title my videos in a way that might seem to think that this is the only way that I'll ever actually do something, that's not really the case. As I said, I don't handicap myself when I'm using my system. I'll use the best tool for the job, and sometimes the best tool is using a GUI. So one example of that is with an image viewer. SXIV is obviously going to be a better way to view an image than doing it directly within your terminal, because one, the quality is going to be better, two, it's going to be quicker, three, you're going to have nice key bindings to move around, and there's just a bunch of other reasons why in this case a GUI application is just going to be a better option. And another example of this is with video editing. So yes, I could use FFmpeg, and yes, I know some people actually do edit their videos with FFmpeg. But what you don't see is I actually stumble over my words very, very frequently. So even though I could do FFmpeg, it would be such a pain to actually work with that I don't really see much of a point of it. And for me, this means that using something like Caden Live is going to be a better option. I wouldn't ever consider actually editing my videos with FFmpeg, even though it can be done, because Caden Live and a bunch of other video editors are effectively just front ends for FFmpeg. I'm not going to do it because using the GUI is just going to be easier. But then when it comes to, say, like a text editor, I don't generally see the point of GUI text editors. There are times when I will use them. I'll talk about that a bit more in just a bit. So for code, maybe there's a reason, but for general writing, Vim is obviously going to be the better way to go. And talking about Vim, Vim or Emacs are one of those staple tools that a Linux power user must use. And for most things, I do use Vim. It's a really, really awesome text editor and I do really advocate for its use. So I generally will use it for things like shell scripting, general writing, web development, but when it comes to doing something that's compiled, so something like C, Java, yes, I know Java's technically not compiled, there's a compilation step, it works for my example, or doing something like C Sharp. In those cases, I do find it easier to just use an ID. Now, obviously, because I have JavaScript development set up for Vim, I could get it set up to work really nicely with C development, have it so I can automatically make my build scripts and automatically compile stuff and do all of the nice stuff that an IDE can do. But I rarely actually use those languages, so it just makes sense to use the complete IDE and sometimes I'll even use a proprietary IDE. So my go-to IDE suite is using the JetBrains suite. I'll talk about that a bit more in just a bit, but yeah, I, I don't use an open source IDE when I want to use an IDE, and I don't really have a problem with that. I use the best tool for the job. So even though I did spend a lot of time setting up web development to work really nicely within Vim, I don't really see a point of doing it for C because 
the amount of work it takes, I can't really justify. So in this case, it just makes sense to take the quicker option, which using Vim, that might seem counterintuitive because learning Vim takes a long time and getting Vim set up takes a long time. So why don't you just spend the extra time setting it up for C and for Java and for C Sharp? Basically, I, I can't be bothered. I'd much rather just not bother with it and just use the complete tool out of the box. And speaking of complete tools, we have desktop environments. So on my system, I use a tiling window manager and I think that tiling window managers are amazing and they are just the objectively better choice to use on your system. I've even made an entire video just ranting about why tiling window managers are just objectively better to use. Now, obviously you might disagree with me, but the objectively better is just hyperbole. Obviously that's, obviously it's just my opinion, but putting objectively in the title obviously is gonna make some people click on it more. Now, because of titles like that, some people might seem to think that I don't like desktop environments or that I think that you shouldn't use a desktop environment. But to be completely honest, I don't actually care. And I don't think that most people actually care what you use on your system. Now, I know that on places like Unix Porn, it might seem like people actually care. But really, I'm just going to use my computer the way that I want to use it. And if you want to use the computer in a completely different way, go ahead and do that. Do whatever you want. It if you want to set it up to look like Mac OS, you want to set it up to look like Windows 95, if you want to set it up to look exactly like my system. It's your system, just do whatever you want basically. I don't think it really makes any sense to actually care what anyone else is actually using on their computer, outside of obviously if they ask for some help on how to set something up, or if they're just looking for some suggestions. So on my system, I will generally use free and open source software. And I have recently did a video talking about my stance on this movement. So the TLDR of that video is basically the way that I look at it is I look at it as software pragmatism. I generally do use open source software, but I just use the best tool for the job. Once again, I don't really want to handicap myself, but being a Linux power user, it seems like a lot of people assume that you must be a free and open source advocate because otherwise you wouldn't be on Linux. Because if you're not a diehard free and open source advocate, just use macOS because you can still use ZSH and all your little terminal applications over there. But macOS has a whole suite of problems, one of it being that I can't use the Tiling Window Manager. That is already a big enough reason for me to not use that operating system. And I think the reason why I see this a lot on my channel is because of partially where my channel started. So if you somehow managed to find my channel way after that, Basically the way that my channel first got started is I got a shout out from Luke back in January. I was making videos before that, but that's when my channel started to take off a bit. So once that happened, I obviously got a lot of Luke's followers coming over. And because of that, I'm guessing a lot of people must have assumed that I, I, I guess, think in the same way that Luke does. But I'm not as extreme about open source software. So I would never use a distro like Parabola, for example. I don't really see the point of doing that. I don't care about removing all the proprietary blobs from my distro. And when it comes to using other tools, as I mentioned earlier, my favorite IDE suite is the JetBrains suite. It is proprietary software, and it's just the best IDE suite that exists. Now, I could get Vim to be even better, but as I said, the amount of times that I want an ID is so small that I don't really see the point of actually putting the effort into actually doing it. So when it comes to actually using a tool, I'll generally lean towards the open source solutions. So if there's a proprietary email client and then there's Thunderbird. So Thunderbird is actually my email client. There's probably going to be email clients that are maybe comparable in performance, maybe even better, but Thunderbird does every single thing that I want it to do and it also has the benefit of being open source So that one I'm going to use but when it comes to some other sort of software Maybe there isn't a good enough open source tool that currently exists in that case I'm not going to shy away from using the proprietary tool just because I'm supposedly a Linux power user and I Must advocate for open source software I'm going to use whatever the best tool for the job is and if the best tool is open source, I'll happily use open source. If it's proprietary, well, I'll happily use proprietary. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was system resources. So most Linux distros, except for the really, really big ones, are way lighter than you could possibly ever get Windows or Mac OS to be. So something like Arch Linux, Artix, Parabola, things like this, their memory footprint and their CPU footprint are minuscule compared to what Windows has. And this is one of the things that I really do love about Linux, and I think that a lot of people do as well. But there's this idea that you must always minimize your system's footprint 
rather than just using whatever it is that you want to use. So on my system, I don't pointlessly waste resources, but I do have a really powerful computer. And this means that I can produce basically whatever experience I want. And if I'm actually using that experience, I don't consider that to actually be wasteful. And one of the things that I don't even consider wasting at this point is hard drive space. So in a different video, I talked about how big my root partition is. It's 400 gigabytes and I've used about 20 of it. I'm never going to fill that up. I don't install games on my system, so I'm never going to fill up my root partition. So I don't actually care if something uses up a bunch of hard drive space. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really care that Natifier applications are really big because I'm never going to fill the space up anyway. Why should I care if it's big? So is it efficient to install applications like that? Absolutely not. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Because I have the hard drive space for it, so I might as well use it. Now, obviously, CPU usage is a little bit more precious because I still render videos and I want my video renders to be as quick as possible. And if I do any 3D modeling or anything like that, I don't want to use up my GPU too much because I want those to render quickly as well. And the same is going to be true for VMs or anything else that is really system intensive. So if I need to do any of those, all I need to do is just kill the application that's eating up my resources. So if I have a bunch of natified applications, for example, and I want to render a video, well, what I could do is just kill a bunch of them and then I have a bunch of free CPU resources. But when I'm not doing something like that, I don't really see the point of just having my CPU sitting there basically doing nothing. When I'm just regularly using my system, I'm using maybe 6-7% of my CPU. So if that goes up to 8, 9, 10%, I've got the specs where that doesn't really matter. Now, obviously, if I was playing around with like an older ThinkPad, I would at least be a little bit more protective about my system resources. But on this desktop, I'll happily use up those resources if I'm going to be doing something productive with them. So some examples of this would be, say, blurred windows or hiding windows that would be appearing behind a full screen window or even just using an expensive web browser. Obviously, I could use something like Surf and Surf is way lighter than any instance of a Chromium browser or a Firefox based browser, but I like what I can do with Chromium and Firefox based browsers, so I'm gonna use those instead. Or Thunderbird, I could use Neomart, but I like Thunderbird and what it can do, so I'm entirely happy to use up those system resources. I don't think it's necessarily important to minimize your system footprint at all times. Now obviously there can be some system creep then, where you get to the point where your system eventually just slows down to a crawl, but as long as you keep an eye on what you're actually doing, you're probably not going to hit that point, at least with modern hardware. So the last thing I wanted to mention is, if you are the sort of person who is a die-hard free and open source software supporter, you always want to minimize your system resources. When you use a tiling window manager, you don't like that other people don't use tiling window managers and you want them to be using your tiling window manager, or you use Vim or Emacs for literally everything and you try to do everything possible within terminal applications. If you are the sort of person who's like that, I'm not saying that any of this is a bad thing. All I'm saying is that not all people who you'd consider a Linux power user fit into this archetype. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Monson, Peter the Road, Tony Donald, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links, where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute, and remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell can down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.